What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Activate 8. And this is the first one that's not split screen on the computer. I'm here with my boy Kyle Snyder at The Shoe, which is awesome. So Kyle, give us a rundown of the things you've done just in the last, what, about half a year in the wrestling community, just so everybody knows what the hell's been going on. So you won. <laughs> so yeah, uh, started off last year uh, as a true freshman in 2015, made the NCAA Finals. Ended up losing, taking second, and then after that, uh, made the 2015 World Team, won the 2015 Senior World Championships, came back, was gonna Olympic red shirt, and then pulled that so I could wrestle for Ohio State on the 2016 Nationals at heavyweight, and then made the 2016 Olympic team. <laughs> and he's 19 years old, right? Just turned 20. Just turned 20. So, yeah. in the last year, he battled a little adversity, getting second, came back, got first, you know, helped his team get, well, we got third in the title, third, right? Yep. Third in the national title, won the national title last year. And basically, from the wrestling standpoint, has achieved things that have never been done at your age, right? When yeah. you won the world title, you were the youngest. Youngest, yeah. So you wrote the, you wrote the record books. Yeah. I love that, that's <laughs> awesome. So on Activate 8, we like to ask eight questions that are super unique, maybe hopefully that Kyle has an answer before. So number one, was wrestling your first love or was it a different sport? I would say it was a different sport. Yeah, which yeah, one? I think Football, just mm -hmm. growing up, was more popular. Sure. And uh, I was a, I was a big kid when I was little, so I was like, man, I'm gonna be six foot six and yeah. <laughs> running out on Sundays to play football. But then I stopped growing, which happens sometimes. Yeah. So wrestling, I think wrestling became my number one sport when I was in eighth grade. Okay. And then uh, eighth grade going into ninth grade, but football was definitely my first. When sport. you first walked onto the mat, when you kind of had that transition. Did you did you instantly love wrestling? Because it's it's a unique sport. It's grimy. It's hard work. It's um it's it's just tough in general. Daily was it something you thrived on, or did you have to kind of learn to love it? Like, what, how did it feel for you? So I, I always loved the competition. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So I mean, when I was younger, my dad would always I would go to, if I wanted to compete in a tournament, I had to go to practice. You know, okay. I had to train, even if it was in the summertime, and there would be times. I was a younger kid, I would be crying, like, Dad, all I want to do is compete. I don't want to practice anymore. Yeah. I just want to compete. But, you know, he made me go to practice. And there became a time where I started to love that process of okay. going in and working hard, as I think I've matured. Mm -hmm. But um, love the sport always. Didn't always love the hard work, probably. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so like we talked about in the Lunge and Learn, a little bit of adversity that you faced last year, or two years, yeah, last year when you got second in the national title as a freshman. When you came off the mat, that second, I want to make sure you speak up so they can hear you because we're kind of loud. Yeah. What, as you, because you got, did you get tech? I got your head. Yeah, so okay, so first of all, when Kyle I hope Snyder, I didn't get tech. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I don't tech. know. Well, first of all, <laughs> forgive me because I'm not, I'm a wrestling no, novice. So, so you got pinned, you got caught, basically is what a lot of people, how they refer to it. It hasn't happened to you since you've been young. That happened, you're like, fuck, probably. What was your initial thought as you're walking off the mat? Like, do you remember what that was, or were you in just shock? I was, I don't remember yeah. any thought. I mean, I remember I wanted to get off the mat and be, fast by, myself. As possible. Yeah. <laughs> okay. be by myself as fast as possible. But Try to it process was, it. Right, and it was kind of weird because it was our first team title. Yeah. Some of my best friends won an individual title, and here I am. Getting second. Getting second place. With that's what's weird about wrestling, because it's team, but it's really an individual sport, right. too. So that's a prime example. Like, you just won, the, you're a national champ anyway. Right. Because your team just won it, but you also won to be a double national champ, obviously singly, too. So that had to be a weird emotion. It was. Yeah. It was really weird. I mean, I was, I came back, we had to go back out to get the team trophy. Tr trophy. I remember everybody was celebrating and tears were just rolling down my face. For a different reason. For a different reason, yeah. right? We were happy and sad. Both. Happy and sad. Yeah. Uh, easier to be happy now. Yeah, of course. Well, yeah, after you was, win, of yeah, course. Yeah. yeah. Than when I was there, but uh, definitely it was like an emotional, it was a lot of emotions going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Yeah. Was there anything that your parents or somebody that mentors you said to you soon after that that helped that somebody could grab something from? Just, I think the thing that helped me the most is that they love me, you know? Yeah. They, they don't they, care if you get second or tenth. Right, yeah. <laughs> right? You know, just, I think, not even your parents, but when you're just surrounded by people that love you no matter yeah. what happens, it helps you get through things. And they didn't talk about the wrestling. Yeah. Nobody wanted to talk about the wrestling. They just gave me a hug, told me they loved me, told me everything's going to cool. be okay. Sports huge. Yeah. And That's then cool. the, the next couple days, it was the same thing, but now it's time to get back to work. Sure. And I know wrestling, obviously, is your passion, and but from a school standpoint, 
what what are you interested in? What do you study? I, I don't know that I've ever heard that. Yeah. So like when you went to, when you go to class, well, what are you in, what are you in school for currently? So my major is sports industry. Okay. Great. So it's like uh, it's pretty broad. You yeah, can be a broad. sports agent, sports marketing. You can do what so. I do. I mean, you can right. do all kinds of different things. Right. For sure. So you want to be in the industry? Well, I want to compete. Yeah. For as long as my body possibly uh -huh. can. Yeah. Sure. So I want to compete for a really long time, and then I right now it could change, but right now I either want to help youth wrestling, mm -hmm. be sure. a youth coach, junior league coach, or just a freestyle coach. So when you walk on a mat, it's similar to I ask fighters this all the time. They have a cage that's closed, but right. you're still in the middle of an arena by yourself, whether it's international, whether it's at St. John's. Like, What's the emotion 30 seconds before you know you get to the center? Is there, what's going through your head? Are you thinking strategy? Are you not thinking anything? Do you live in the moment? Is it just a blank? Like, what happens? Because I've never really competed like this before, so that's why I'm always interested. Right. In. Yeah, I think for the bigger matches, when it's, you know, you're going for the gold medal or you're in the finals or it's somebody that's got to be a big matchup for you, sure. I'm just excited. Yeah. I want to compete. Yeah. I want to run out there and the second the whistle blows, I want to start attacking. And yeah. the same couple thoughts are running through my head that, you know, I'm prepared for this. Mm -hmm. I can't do, I mean, I can't do anything more. They're about to call me out to the mat, so I'm ready to go. Sure. And uh, a couple of other technical things will run through my head, but other than that, just excited to wrestle. That's awesome. What has um, the Ohio State experience been like as a, a high profile athlete um, in general? Because everybody that has played sports wants to be a D1 star. He wants to compete, and you obviously get to compete international. What did it feel like to one, get recruited, two, be at a place like this and know you're a part of it? Is there just a sense of just uh, achievement or uh, pride of being a Buckeye? I think people love yeah. that stuff. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, Buckeye Nation, when they say Buckeye Nation, they mean it. Like you smile talking <laughs> right. about it, right? They yeah. mean it, man. It's like it's hundreds a of thousands of people that support you, and I don't really think there's anything like it. You know, if you uh, it started out with, you know, Logan Stever last year being a three-time so champion cool. and a four-time. He walks out onto the field, the whole stadium stands 100, up. 100,000 people. Right. It's like, hey, I, I want that same. You want that feeling. I want that feeling. And uh, it's definitely been an incredible experience being here. Sure. I'm happy, extremely happy and grateful that I chose a school like this mm -hmm. and to be surrounded with such amazing people. Sure. Yeah. What, um, I don't know anything about your, like how you grew up. Like, what did your parents do for a living? Um, where uh, did you learn like certain things from work ethic from them? Because it had to come from somewhere. So right. do you, can you can you kind of shed some light oh, yeah. on that? My dad works for the Homeland Security. Okay. And my mom, when I was little, she uh, was like a body pump, fitness pump teacher. Really? So you have yeah. a workout person in your yeah, family. Sure. Okay, cool. They, but they, my mom was a cheerleader. My dad was a football player in Excellent. college. Okay. Went to the same college and stuff. So I think I got my work ethic from both of them. I mean, I would go to the gym with my mom and watch her do her fitness stuff. And we Parents, would, do you hear this? Yeah. Do you hear this? That's <laughs> yeah. cool. I would, I would uh, you know, mess around while she was doing that. And then my dad, I remember in the living room, we'd be watching TV at night and all of a sudden he'd be, go to his stomach, start doing push-ups. I'm like, what are you doing, man? And so I'm not gonna make my kids weirdos. <laughs> yeah, doing push-ups and sit-ups and stuff. So it's like, when you watch that stuff as a kid, I think it just, sure. Yeah gets bought over to Europe. Yeah, basically it's just osmosis, right? right you just see sure. it all the time. And that's why I always think like, my kids might not be crazy maniacs, but they're gonna have fitness in their life because it's our life. Right. I mean, that's part of what we do. So we talked about being a Buckeye. Now what very few people get to do is represent the country. And not only that, win a world medal. What does it feel like being in that place, on the podium, getting the medal, and obviously in the Olympic year, we're hoping that happens. But like, tell, tell me how that feels, because that's a whole different Right, game, right. It is definitely. I mean, representing your country is there's almost nothing like sure. It. And to to get to achieve what you wanted to achieve, yeah. At the end of the day, it's almost I almost don't have any words for it. People ask me how I can describe like get my hand raised at the world or stepping on the podium, and I really don't have any words for it. Yeah. And other than I was extremely excited, and that. Uh, it was a moment I guess I'll never forget. Yeah, it's one of those ones that are etched in your mind right. forever. Clay Guida, which I love, he's one of my buddies and he's actually a partner in Activate Media. He he always tells me like on the way to the cage, right before they, they hit the whistle, it's like being at the best rock concert ever of all time. It's your favorite song. It's like everything's at clicking at the same regards and like he said that it's just not a feeling that you can really like put on paper. Right. It's a, but the, I would say like 
all that like crescendo of boom and then you actually hit your goal, how do you then wake up the next day? And Dustin asked this a little bit like with the same fire in your stomach. It may be because you haven't won a gold medal yet and maybe that's the thing, but as you keep knocking on, people ask me this all the time, gee, you build a company, you've done this, like why are you, why are you still getting out of bed at four in the morning? So do you knowingly write that down, gold medal? 2016 or like how what's that process for you I guess yeah so I have a journal that I I write down uh, it's in the mindset manual get yeah. a journal <laughs> I got a journal that I write down things on and normally it's not you know to get a gold medal it's things wrestling related just okay. specific to the task I, gotcha. like, I want to get I want to get better at my high crotch I want to get better at it. defending this something something that I can really focus on and that I can really pour all my you're energy you're dissecting it so you can get a gold medal. right exactly I like it. exactly man Ooh. yeah so I think there's all these little things that go into reaching your ultimate goal sure. and I want to focus on those I want to perfect those and then I know if I take care of that every day consistently then I'm gonna reach Bombs. that I'm dissecting your weakness consistently yeah is what then compounds to that moment where you have to rely on it, right better said than I could have yeah but I know what he's trying to say <laughs> but that's the articulation of what you're saying and that can really go for anything right because everybody's got weaknesses I mean dude I'm a hor I'm horribly organized I'm really good like with my my journal and my food and I'm amazed because I'm really good at fitness right but when it comes outside of that like my uh, friends make fun of me like I'm starting to use my calendar on my phone like I put this in today and the other day we had a conference call and the guy, my buddy John he was wrong I was like no dude I got it in the calendar it's on Thursday right. and he's like oh shit like Corey's using his calendar but it's funny because it's as simple as that is it's hard for me and so the same thing like you like you say man that, that part's weak if you grind that thing every day you might not be the best in the world at the high crotch but if you're at 70 percent and you go to 89 percent that's gonna be harder for somebody to get you, right? Right. So that's kind of the key of dissecting those weaknesses, and I think that's a that's a great thing. Tell me, um, I want to wrap up with this. Tell me one thing that you've learned from Coach Ryan that has stuck with you being in the program, because he's a pretty amazing guy, and I, I would think that you feel blessed to have him as a head coach because oh, yeah. his story is amazing. Yeah. Driving from Syracuse to whatever is that? You know, his whole thing. I love Coach Ryan. So tell me about him, how he's impacted you, and something that the listeners could take with. Listen. Yeah, something that's impacted me he, he's, he, he tells a lot of stories I know, know? he does he's yeah. awesome so yeah. and they're really inspirational mm -hmm. and uh, one of the things he was telling us he said he was listening to some podcast or he was uh, reading a book and in the book or in the podcast they were talking about uh, you know actions speak louder than words right yep. so he said for us he said if someone were to follow you around and you weren't allowed to say a word they were following you around for one day 24 hours yeah. They were to see everything you did. At the end of the day, could they tell what your goals were? Were they high? Were they low? Who, who were, who, what do you want to be? They should be able to tell by the end of the 24 hours um, wow. exactly who you are without even speaking to you. And that's, that's something that stuck to me because I want, I want not only what I say, yeah. I want you to see what I say. Yeah. And I, I want... Um, Man, that's strong. Yeah, I want... I want people who don't know me, who've never talked to me, just to watch what I do, and they say, "All right, that just guy, that guy wants something." He's a big. champion, all right? Ooh, all right. Last, last question. What do you want, Kyle Snyder? I know you're young, but what, what do you want to be known for? Like I always ask that at the end, like when you're done, you're retired as a wrestler, maybe you're coaching or whatever. Like, what do you want this part of your life to be known for? The wrestling part. Yeah. I want. I want to be known as the best wrestler to ever walk the planet. Yes, I was hoping you'd say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's perfect. Yeah. And that's what you should be saying. And you, plain and simple, no second. You, you want to be known as when they see that guy. That's the, like the Dan Gabriel type of like myth, right? It's like that's Kyle Snyder. He's a fucking boss. Exactly. Kyle, thanks for your time, brother. Appreciate it. This Activate 8, we're out.